When I'm riding around the glow And I'm doing this And I'm signing that First off, I'd like to kind of define, I guess, an exponential function. So, an exponential function has the form f of x equals b to the x, where b is greater than 0 and b does not equal 1. Otherwise, if b does equal 1, then you basically just have a straight line because 1 to any power is just going to equal itself, which is 1. Okay, so for these exponential functions, they're positive for all x, even if x is negative. So that's one note. Let's see, all right. Positive for all, ooh, that, that says all, all x, okay? Um, and the range is, so range is the set of y values, basically. So the range would be set of all real numbers. So all, that all looks better, all real numbers. All real positive numbers, that is. Correction, sorry. All real positive numbers, okay? Um, and this, the last thing, um, we're going to get a little bit more specific here. So right over here. So f of x, so this function um, equals b to the x. So this exponential function is increasing. So increasing as in the value, each greater, the more that you move to the right, the greater the y values. So it's going to look like, let's see, you can draw a legible. Hey, that was pretty good. Okay, so um, basically increasing when b is greater than 1. So if b is 2, 3, 4, all the way up, um, then you're going to have a graph that resembles something like this. Whereas on the other hand, if you have b less than 1, then you're going to get a decreasing graph, which instead is going to look like this. Okay? And then one last point on exponential functions. Um, all of these graphs, any, no matter what your base is, what your b is, um, they're all going to cross the y-axis at 0, 1. So, um, so I'll just write 0, 1. This is a key point for any exponential function. Because if you think about it, when you put it 0 in for the x spot, as the exponent, anything raised to the 0 power is going to equal 1. So hence the value. This is like a key value for exponential functions. OK, so now that we went over that, um, we will get into derivatives. Um, OK, so now we're dealing with this special function of f of x equals e to the x. OK, so e, as we all know, um, that's our natural number, or natural e. Um, so the derivative of this is, I like it because it's pretty simple. So d dx of e to the x just equals e to the x. So, and we're thinking of x as having a 1 in front here. Um, so a more general way of writing this would be, um, let's see, if we have a composition of functions. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier, but still not too bad. So we have d dx of, uh, that's an x, of e to the g of x. So g of x in this case is a function in itself, a function of x. So then the derivative, it, this derivative, is going to equal... Um, e to the g of x. So just like normal, it looks just like the first original equation that we had, except for now we're just going to um, implement the chain rule. So then we do chain rule of the top uh, exponent, because that is a function in itself. Okay, so this is g prime of x. Um, okay, and then we'll do one more at the bottom here. So that's, that's one way, another, um, I guess, more advanced uh, I don't know, variation on this original function, uh, on the original equation. So then the last one that we have is d dx of e to kx plus b. And this is kind of, so all of this is in the exponent. Ooh, that's parentheses. Um, so this is kind of just a more specific way of writing g of x. 
because kx plus b technically is a function of x, with k and b being constants. So just to illustrate, though, the derivative of this last one would be the same thing. So e to the kx plus b, and then times the, um, it's like the g prime of x. So the, the first derivative of the exponent here of this function would be just k, right? So times k. All right? So that's basically it um, for those rules. Now let's do an example. So we have um, calculate f. Woo, that was a bad f. Hold on. OK, so calculate f prime of 0, right? Um, where we have f of x, see, f of x equals e to the 2x e to the 2x sine times sine of x. Okay, so this is our first example. Um, so first of all, to calculate this, we have to figure out what f prime of x is, and then just plug in 0. So here we're just practicing with the whole um, derivative of e to the something, of um, derivative of exponential, I guess. So f prime of x is going to equal, um, and here we have to implement the product rule. So we'll do... Uh, derivative of the first, so derivative of the first would be e to the 2x, and then don't forget the chain rule, so then we have times 2, right? And then the second term stays the same, so then we just have our normal sine x, okay? Plus, and then now we keep the first the same, e to the 2x times derivative of sine x, which is cosine x, okay? So now that we have everything in terms of x, now we have to plug in our 0 um, in order to find the value at that point. So f prime of 0 is going to equal, we can just move the 2 in front, so 2e to the 2 times 0, which is just 0, um, sine of 0 plus e to the 2 times 0 times cosine of 0. Okay. And then from here on out, it's just regular old math. So then we have 2e to the 0, and then sine 0, just simplifying here, um, e to the 0, cosine 0. And we see that the sine goes away. Um, so this part is going to be 0. Um, and then this part, that cosine 0 is 1, right? And then e to the 0, that's also going to be 1. So our answer is 0 plus 1, which ultimately equals 1. Okay? That is a 1 at the bottom. All right. So now, moving on to integrals um, involving E. When I'm riding around the globe, and I'm doing this, and I'm signing this,